Now, if you've done any kind of uh, HTML and CSS work, any kind of web design, I'm sure this looks pretty standard fare to you. Now, we've got our title tag, we've got a reference to a style sheet, which I've got open over here, and that's about it. Now, going on to our body, you'll notice that there's no tables here, and this is a, a tableless design, and I'm trying to use uh, class names to describe sections of my document. So I've got a div here, I call it head, and then I use the h2 tag because it's going to be bigger than the h3 tag. I use uh, a div here called nav, I have an unordered list with various elements, and then I have an active uh, list item over here, and so on and so forth. I have a div called content, in it I have left content, which is going to be that hero, and then a collection of postings or a posting, and then if you go down here you'll see that I have another posting, so we've got two postings in this document. Again, using the h1 tag or a header tag. Then we have a section for metadata, in other words the author and the time. And then I have a left column and a right column, and I, you know, if I want to turn something into a pull quote, a pull quote is when you want to take a part of your document and you want to emphasize it, so you've got that over there. So now that you have a sense of the document, oh, by the way, we have our sidebar, again, just a class, and then we've got an unordered list, so that if I go back here, each one of these items is actually a list item, and I'm going to be using, I'll just show you what that looks like in Web Developer. So I'll just display the element information, and you can see that I've got uh, a class called content, and then inside it a class called sidebar, and then inside that an unordered list tag, a UL tag, and then this is a list item, and then this is a list item. And then inside those list items, again, I'm using a class of type nav, but it's being styled differently. And in here, you know, we've just got some text. And then at the bottom, I'm using, this is a sort of a CSS trick to clear your floats, so that if you have two columns and you want something to appear underneath, you can just create a div called clear or give it a class name called clear and then assign some properties to that. And then I've got a footer. Another div class equals footer. Now, this looks pretty good. You know, I think by most measures this is a pretty semantically well done XHTML document, but there are some obvious pitfalls. Um, you know, div here is being used for all sorts of things and it doesn't really describe the document in any way. It just becomes this uh, tag that is redundant. You know, it would be much smarter to say, oh, you know what, this is a header, this is a nav. But instead, we're using the class, which is really supposed to be used for CSS, to help describe the document. And this is something that HTML5 tries to resolve. Uh, another thing that you'll notice is, I mean, that's that's really it. Also, in terms of the footer, um, you know, that that doesn't really mean anything. It should just be a footer tag. The navigation sections could be better described as well. The postings, you know, if we're going to be doing a lot of postings, it would make more sense for them to just, you know, be called articles or whatever, and so on and so forth. So HTML5 provides additional markup, additional tags that we can use to better describe our documents. Why would you want to do that? Well, when, you better when, you do when your document is better described, it becomes easier for a search engine or you know, somebody that's trying to pull out relevant information in your document. And you know what? I don't want the navigation. Or I'm going to take everything in the nav section and I'm going to use those as links to you know, the major arteries of my website. Um, and this can only really happen when you properly describe your document. And why do you want to do that? So that search engines like Bing and Google can easily go into your site and easily pull out all of the pages that are relevant. And of course, that increases your search ranking and ultimately uh, also makes your site more accessible for things like screen readers and um, you know, text-to-speech tools for people that are blind. Uh, another thing that you'll notice is that at the top, we've got this XML declaration, this doc type, and this HTML tag. All of this is really doing the same thing. And in order to describe an XHTML document, we have to write three lines of code. Uh, again, that's also kind of redundant. Now let's take a look at the style sheet. So the style sheet itself, 
again, is pretty straightforward. You know, you'll notice that I'm using, you know, dot head, dot nav, dot content. Whenever there's a dot, that's a reference to a class. Um, you know, basically, we're just describing things. I have a general description of what the navigation should look like, and then we override it when we go down to the left content, sorry, the sidebar, yeah, the sidebar, and then we can say, okay, I want to override the nav for the sidebar, but I'm still using the same class name. So you're going to find me doing a lot of this. I'm assuming that you have a cursory understanding of CSS. If you want, you can check out, you can check out the WordPress from scratch tutorial where you see me kind of building something from scratch using CSS and explaining how that construction happens. But I'm going to assume, at least for this tutorial, that you have a cursory understanding of CSS and CSS selectors. Uh, you'll also notice that I indent my CSS. This is something that it's a style that I've adopted over the years, and I find it really helpful for managing CSS documents that get pretty large and having an understanding of how they're constructed so that I know that one thing is inside of another thing. Um, you don't have to follow that convention. The spaces don't do anything, um, but I find them helpful. So in the next tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is actually you know, taking this document, and we're going to convert it into HTML5 slowly. And with that, we're going to start moving into CSS, and then I'm going to show you some of the cool features of CSS3. And then after that, we're going to kind of take a left turn and look at fonts and all the wonderful font support in HTML5. And then lastly, we're going to look at audio and video and how we can, you know, basically use movies in a totally different way, make them more accessible, make them work on iPad, iPhone, or any kind of mobile device with relative ease. And so that's about it. I'm John Lebensold, and thanks for listening.